Okay, on the other hand, I will show you how to do the product to sum identity. In another word, I want to show you guys what if we have sine times sine, and then if we have different angles, then what we can do with it. From here, you see we have sine times cosine, right? But there's a 2 in front, so let me just divide both sides by 2. So I will look at this and then say this is sine alpha times cosine beta, and that's equal to, let me just put this down as 1 half times all that, so cool. But it's not cool, because I wanted to show you sine times sine rather than sine times cosine. Hmm, how can we do that? One way to do it is, you can change instead of using the angle sum and difference formula for sine. You can just use cosine of alpha plus beta and cosine of alpha minus beta. Do all the work, you will come up with a formula nicely, okay? But since I have this right here, let me just utilize like this, okay? And I can also show you guys the co-function identity. Namely, I see cosine beta, which we don't want, right? I want to have this in terms of sine. To do so, I will change this into the following. Cosine is the same as sine. Just look at what the angle is and then do 90 degrees minus this angle. Okay, this is the beta, so we have this. So that's pretty much the idea. So cosine beta is the same as sine of 90 degrees minus beta. Why? Because when we have cosine, co means complementary, okay? Complementary, meaning that these two angles have to be adding up to be 90 degrees, or pi over 2, depending if you are using degrees or radians. And it's the same as um, any other co-functions, such as cosecant or cotangent, okay? So for example, real quick, cosecant of 20 degrees is the same as secant of 70 degrees because they are co-functions and the angles inside add up to be 90 degrees. Okay? Right. So we have this right here and I will still write this down. This is the sine alpha like this. Okay, now here we have an angle. Here we have a different angle, right? I don't want to deal with 90 degrees minus beta. You could, but I don't want to. So we will do what we did over here. So I will rename these two variables. First of all, I will just say let alpha to be a, and secondly, I will call this, namely 90 degrees minus beta to be b, okay? And the idea is that, okay, here I have the alpha beta already. I will just change the alpha beta in terms of a and b. Alpha is the same as beta, so I don't have to do anything right here. But here, let me put the beta to the right-hand side, so we have passed the beta. And then let me put this onto the left hand side. So we have 90 degrees minus B, okay? So once again, you put this to the right hand side and I just write it down first. So that's the beta positive and then minus B on both sides. So we have 90 degrees minus B. So this is the, the beta in terms of B. Okay, now this is A, this is B and I will just have to change the alpha and beta in terms of A and B. And let's focus on the left hand side right here, okay? So I will show you this right here. Uh, let me just write it down again. This is sine A, right? Because we set that to be so. And then times sine B now, right? Because this is B. This right here is equal to one half times the big parentheses. We have the sine alpha is A. So we have sine of A. And then we are going to add it with the beta, which is 90 degrees minus B. So we'll just put this down, 90 degrees minus B, like this. And then we continue, plus sine of alpha is A again. This time we have to minus beta, which is that. So be sure you use the parentheses, 90 degrees minus B. Okay, parentheses, parentheses. All right, if you want to box this and then code it to be the formula, fine. But we don't want to deal with 90 degrees. I want to simplify this a little bit. And the truth is, whenever you have 90 degrees in terms in, inside of the sign, you can somehow make the cosine combo to help us out a little bit. So I will do that for you guys. So let's look at this part right here. All right, I still have the one half all the way in the front and then we still have the sign right here. And the deal is that I will just write the 90 degrees first minus 
whatever I have to put inside. Because whenever I have sine of 90 degrees minus whatever, this is going to turn out to be cosine of whatever. Okay, and that's exactly what we used it right here earlier. All right, now, let me put the A and B inside here of this parentheses. This A was positive, but if I want to put in here, it has a negative on the, in the front already. So I will put down negative A first, okay? And then this is negative B, but the negative we have it in the front already. So I will put down plus B. If you distribute, you get positive A and then negative B. So we know it's good. And then we continue, we add, we add this with, do the same thing here, we have sine, open the parentheses, 90 degrees minus whatever we have to inside, right? So I have to have this one for the sine and then one more for the one half. Okay, for this one, it's slightly trickier because here we have a negative 90 degrees, huh? So we have to do this a little bit. This is A minus 90 degrees and then Negative times negative is plus B like that. Hmm. Be careful with this right here. Technically, this is a negative 90, so I have to put a negative right here, right? And then I still want to have the minus parentheses. Okay, let's see. First of all, A was positive here. So I will have to have negative A so that this times that is positive A. Likewise, this is positive B. Uh, to put it inside here, I will have to have a negative B. So if you distribute, you get past the A times past, you get past the A plus B like that, okay? So that's just some algebra right here. Okay, now we have to do a few more things. This right here, we still have one half, that's good. And this is the following. When we have sine of 90 degrees minus this, this right here turned out to be cosine already. Cosine of this part, which is negative A plus B like that. Okay, and however, for this one though, this is not exactly sine of 90 degrees minus whatever. However, we have a negative right here, right? I can actually factor this out and I can use a blue pen to show you. <laughs> negative, negative, I'm going to factor out the negative and then I will have the following. This becomes 90 degrees, okay? And then I factor this negative out already, so that's good. But I still have this negative right here, so I'm going to factor that out right here. So it becomes minus here, and then I'll open the parentheses. This two negative, I factored it already, so it becomes A plus B, okay? <laughs> yes, I also have a blue pen, like literally, anyway. Now, this is the input for sine, and we know sine is an odd function, so I can take the negative out. So this is the minus, right? And then I will have the sine of 90 degrees minus this, and this will be, see, 90 degrees minus that, this will be cosine now, cosine of this input, which is the A plus B, okay? So this is just some algebra here, and I know this is harder if you want to uh, do it this way, you could have just done with cosine alpha plus beta and then cosine of alpha minus beta. It's actually easier, but as I said, this is actually a good exercise to play around with uh, uh, sine cosine. Anyway, so this right here is pretty much it. Uh, depends how you want to do it. As I said, this is pretty much it, but this is not usually how the formula will be presented because here we have negative a plus b, what we can do is we can actually factor out the negative again. So if I factor this out, input here becomes a minus b, okay? So if you look at this carefully, this is actually cosine of this part. So what are we doing right here? Well, because we know cosine is an even function, that means this negative here doesn't really matter. So in the end, I can tell you this is one half times cosine and once again cosine is an even function so we can say bye bye to this negative so we have a minus b right here which is much nicer of course right and you will see because this and that are in the same order a and b right and then we have the minus and then we have the cosine of a plus b like that Whew, this right here we have the sine a uh, times sine b ah sine A times sine B. 
this is equal to one half times one half times cosine of a minus b, and then minus cosine of a plus b. And with that, this right here is the product because you have sine times co uh, sine times sine, and this is the sum technically because you're adding negative parts. So anyway, this right here it's another identity, right? So this I think is really really cool. And as always, that's it.